Hi again, this demonstration is another image processing technique. We'll be doing it in Python again using Jupyter Notebooks. We'll be doing edge detection and you do edge detection with something called high pass filters also known as convolutional kernels. The steps that will proceed in this order, we're going to load the image, convert the image to grayscale, view image, apply blur, blur. There's two types of blur I'll be using, Gaussian or and mean blur. Um, view the image again, apply the Sobel filter, which is the edge detector, and view the image. As usual, we load the usual resources. Okay, if you have seen my other videos, I have some other videos that um, talk about these things. Load the resources. I'm going to get the picture from my directory. Um, let's execute it. I'm going to get the picture from my directory and it should be low. There it is. That's the picture we'll be using. A little slow. Right. Next step is to convert to grayscale. And we'll, we're going to view that. So this is the picture in grayscale. And a little, about, a little bit about convolutional kernels slash filters. Kernels can be used to transform images. Blur images, do edge detection, sharp images, etc., etc. You can look that up. There are many types of kernels, but the one we're interested in today are as follow: the Sobel, which uh, is comes in two parts: the Sobel X kernel and the Sobel Y kernel. Sobel X is biased towards vertical lines more than horizontal lines, so it shows up the vertical lines. And kernel and Sobel Y is biased towards the horizontal lines more than the vertical line. So it shows the horizontal lines up. This is how the kernel is. And if you do um, in a edge detecting kernels, the weights, these are called weights. If you add them up, they should add to zero. If they don't add to zero, then you'll be biasing the image in one direction or the other. So that will have the effect of lightening the image and darkening the image. You can do a lot with kernels. We'll be using the Gaussian blur kernel. And here you see a small Gaussian kernel. Here you can kind of picture, a, look at a Gaussian curve or the bell curve. And you can cut and you, say you're looking at it from the top and it's a three-dimensional curve you could kind of see that the four is the highest point and it gradually tapers off on each side you can kind of see that there and the mean blur kernel just all ones as you or since it's all positive and as well as the Gaussian blur is all positive it will bias the image in one direction so these are not these are not um, these are not um, line detectors. These are for blurring the image, changing the pixel intensities. How do we do that? Well, this is the we get the array here, and it has to be divided by the sum of the indexes. So the, the sum of all of these weights is, gives you 16, and that kind of gives you the average. And same thing with the mean blur. So this is the Gaussian blur. This is the mean blur. You have to divide it by 9. Only the blurs, you have to do that. The Sobel X and Sobel Y, you just use them as is. All right. Um, I haven't really utilized. This is another way you can sort of generate a blur function a blur kernel and of course this is one way you can generate your um your mean mean blur function by using these 
functions. A little bit about kernels and how they are used. All right, so this is the kernel. The kernel is, is convolved with the image data, and it goes over each pixel. And it does this operation. It multiplies the corresponding, say this green, you see this green kernel here? We fit it over this pixel area of the image with the center, Everything is going to be determined by the center pixel. That's where the result would go. All right. That's the where the result of the convolution will go. So you do this operation, as you can see, each one, a kernel index is multiplied with the corresponding pixel index. And you sum up all of that the sum you hit as you can see the sum here and then you get the average since we're using the mean blur here it's divided by nine because you have as you add up all of the indexes add up the values and in indexes you get nine and once you get that average that average goes back into the new image the same position the image will be the same size as the original image. That new pixel value goes back into the same position as you can see here. It goes back into the same position. So it just goes over each pixel and builds another image with the blur. As you can see, the mean blur sort of, um, see the, it's around 30 here. We surrounded the thir this 30 pixel here value 30 and um, you can see it actually pushes the, the pixel intensity a little bit higher to 50 but if you use a Gaussian blur you can see the Gaussian blur is a little bit closer to the pixel value so the Ga Gaussian blur is um, I think traditionally a little bit better blurring kernel the Gaussian blur and you can see here his operation divided by the sum of the values of the index in the kernels. Here it is here. All right. Then it just, that's how you create your new image. It's a new image you have to create. You cannot overwrite the old image. Otherwise, the math will get all messed up. All right. So we have that. That is all of our kernels that we'll be using and let's see what the kernels will do here we have we do a we're using the M blur so we're using the mean blur here to blur the gray image then we feed that back into our Sobel kernel we feed that back into our Sobel kernel see this is Sobel X and Sobel Y Right now, I'll just print out Sobel, what the result of Sobel Y looks like. Let's see that. And you can see those are the edges. See, so it picks up, picks up the horizontal, not, um, not horizontal, like the vertical leaning edges very well. And you can see it's not really getting yet yeah, the horizontal edges really well. And it's not really getting the vertical edges. That's the, that's the Y uh, symbol. Let's see what the X will give us. All right, the X is a little different. Mm, it, so it picks up, it's picking up these white images, these gray images. So it's picking up the edges a little bit better. On these images using the X Sobel, Sobel X. All right. And the horizontal line, not so well, not so good. Horizontal leaning lines. All right. Um, let's see what, when we blur the image, what we got. Let's just look at the image. Control. Let's 
Let's see what we get when once we use the mean blur. All right, so this is the mean blur. And it is it slightly different than yeah. It's slightly different. Now the reason why we're using blur is you use a blur before you do the sobel is because sobels are incredibly noisy. You can see how much more smooth and smoothened out this image looks. You can see how it's so smooth. Here, this, this is the original image. And this is the blur. Just a little bit more smoothened out. And you can mess around with the blur kernels if you want. Make them bigger, smaller. All right. Um, let's see what the 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 Gaussian blur would do. So this is the we're going to be using the Gaussian blur. This image is smoothing out a little bit more. Yeah, but the Gaussian blur is reputedly the better one to use rather than the mean blur. All right, I don't know if you could tell the difference between the two, but all right, let's move on. And then you can just sum up the images. This is sort of experimental. You can sum up the images two ways. You can just use the add operator, or you can use the function, this add function in the CV2. It gives you a weird image. It gives you a weird image, let's see. What happened there? Um, something happened. I'm not sure. Uh, um, hmm, what happened there? I'm not sure what happened there. All right, so we can increase the kernel size. Kernel size are a, a prime and odd number starting at three by three, five by five, seven by seven, and they are square matrix. All kernels are square matrix. All right. Let's see what we get here. And look at that. You see, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more sh like um, highlighted, right? It's a little bit more highlighted. Let's see. Let's look at the, filtered image Y again. Right, so this is the Y filtered image, edge image, right? This is the Sobel, but a little bit bigger. This is the bigger, the X, this is silver Y, sorry. This is, looks like more of a silver Y. And you can see the edges are a little bit more well defined in this image when the kernel is a little bit better, bigger. But you can experiment with that to see what's going on. All right, and that's about edge detection. I'm not sure what happened there. I'll have to look at that. It was working. It's not really important, but. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Bye.